Today we're going to talk about identifying zeros on a graph. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is graph this table of values so I can see what is going on in my graph first. So I have 9, 2, I have 3, negative 2, I have negative 3, negative 6, and I have negative 9, 10. Now, I'm graphing a line, because that's what we're doing in this unit, we're graphing lines. I'm going to take my ruler, nicely line it up, make my nice pretty line. Now, a couple things come out of my nice pretty line. First of all, when I'm just looking at a graph that is a line, I can first of all tell my x and y intercept. Why? Just like last class, my x-intercept is where my graph crosses my x-axis. So because it's where it crosses my x-axis, my x-intercept is 6. My y-intercept is where the graph crosses my y-axis. It crosses my y-axis right here, so my y-intercept is negative 4. Now, we graphed intercepts last class, but here, finding the zero of, an, of a linear function is just an extension of what we did last class, because we already know how to graph the x and the y intercept. We did that last class. So what is the identifying zero? The zero by definition is where y is zero. So when y equals zero, we're talking about the x-intercept. So, finding the zero of a linear function is easy if you know the, the x-intercept. The zero is the x value of the x-intercept. So the zero of this graph up here is where it crosses the x-axis, so therefore my zero is six. Zero means where y is zero. It doesn't come off and say that, but that's what it means. When y is zero, we're finding the x-intercept. So now, let's go ahead and try one. We know actually three different ways to graph now. We could graph it with a table, we could graph it using slope-intercept form, or we can graph it using x and y-intercept. So the first thing I want to do is graph this line. Okay, because it's already set up as y equals and it's already in slope-intercept form, I'm not going to use the table. You can certainly use the table to graph it. I'm going to go ahead and graph it finding my m and my b, because as we know right now, that is my slope, that is my intercept. So we know when we graph slope-intercept form from last class that we graph the intercept, which is the b. I move the slope, which is 2 over 1, so that means I will go up 2 over 1. I will take my ruler now. and draw a nice pretty line. So now when I identify my x-intercept, my x-intercept here is one negative one-half. It's where it crossed my x-axis right here. My y-intercept is right there. It's where it crossed my y-axis. So therefore, what is my zero? My zero is my x-intercept so it's negative one-half. They are the same answer. Now I'm going to graph this one using x and y-intercept because it's already set up nicely to do so. As in the past, when I use x-intercept, you're going to set y equal to zero. So therefore, if y is zero, I get two times x equals 6. My x-intercept is 3, or 3, 0. My y-intercept, oops, put it over here. My y-intercept, I'm going to set x equal to 0. So 
So it is the point 0, 0,3, because I set x equal to 0, so it is 3. My 0 of my graph, bam, is the same as my x-intercept. They are the same. And because I'm going to go ahead and finish out this problem, I want to go ahead and graph it as well, just to get some graphing practice. So my x-intercept was 3, 0. Y-intercept was 2, 0. Bam. Here. Awesome. Now, I found them mathematically, which is what we're going to do in a second. You can either A, look at the graph and find your x and y intercept, because it's graphed right here, or B, you can find it mathematically, which we did right here. We are going to find the, the zero mathematically. If I'm finding the zero mathematically, I am only finding my x-intercept. So that means to find my x-intercept, we set y equal to 0 and solve. So on our first example, if y is 0, 2x equals 4, because 2 times 0 is 0. So if x equals 2 for the ordered pair 2, 0 for my x-intercept, my 0 equals 2. 0 can be written as a um, number, like when I say x-intercept and give you a blank, or it can be written as an ordered pair as well because it is where it crosses the x-axis. So you can write it as just the 2 or you can write it as 2, 0. You will see it both ways. It just depends on what the question's asking you from. Okay, on example B, I'm finding my x-intercept, so therefore my y is 0. I'm going to solve for x. I'm not going to make some silly, ridiculous, repeating decimal. I'm going to keep fractions because fractions are good. So my 0 is 5 thirds, or again, I could write the ordered pair, 5 thirds, 0. Because y is 0, and my 0 is my x-intercept. Example C. Finding my x-intercept, so y is 0. I need to get rid of my fraction, so I'm going to multiply the whole thing times the reciprocal. I'm going to reduce before I multiply, so 5 equals x, so my 0 is 5 or it is 5, 0. It can be the ordered pair or the number, depending on how you write it. Depending on how you write it. You could never leave it like this as an answer. That's an equation of a line. Okay, go ahead and do D, E, and F. So we'll stop the video for a second, or pause the video actually, and go ahead and do D, E, F, and we'll put them up.
Great job. Check your work.